I lied. There is a button to push. Got it. The lovely and majestic red peacock in his natural habitat. Notice as he shies away from the wild peat. Look at the sheen of Pete's coat, obtained from the drink of hops and the eating of wild weeds. This song and dance, prescribed every Tuesday and Thursday. Nature, a wonderful gift. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Uh, Pete is still trying to get his life together, as usual, but we're bringing our beautiful mugs to you. We can set up. We can set up one of those. Uh, uh, what are they called? What's the thing I got from my mom? The the frame, the weird frame. Oh birthday. right, the digital frame. I don't know what they call it, but that's yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the device, right? Yeah, I got that from my mom, and uh, then you just upload pictures to it. You send the email address out, and pictures just upload. And I randomly like she, she gets from my sister like grandkids and here's dogs and here's me. It's like ah, here's me drinking with John. She's like, oh my God. Here's me smoking four cigarettes at once, mom. You said I would never amount to anything. <laughs> she was so wrong. She, she was, was so wrong. wrong. And all my. Middle school teachers, you guys are assholes too. Look at me now, <laughs> Mr. Ackerman. Mrs. Wolf. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I block all those names out. <laughs> Just like my Why? whole officer. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Whenever we forget old what's his name, I have to pee in his cup once a month. Ridiculous, John. <laughs> I refuse to use his real name. You, sir, are someone I pee on monthly. <laughs> You're a fetish at best. At best. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I digress. It's been a tough road. It's been a long road to get here. If you're just tuning in live on the stereo apps, you can hit that subscribe button or hit that little link above you, and you will see our, our live channel, which is on YouTube right now. You see John's um, silo, and you see my... Uh, Disdain for John. Um, live in person. Oh my God. <laughs> you can do it now. You can do it. You're not here live watching this. You can also catch us on the, the, the Spotify, the Apple Pod, the Apple Music, the Apple TV. The um, If you go to your local um, deli and say, Where are the apples? And they'll point you over to the grocery <laughs> section. Find us there in the apples. Nope, not even true. But also, I like the deli things. I couldn't think of one. Um, uh, I'll take places I don't go. Uh, I'll take places I don't go in the supermarket for five hundred. Uh, John, what are uh, where they sell apples? My guys, guys, my guys, Stewie Prince here from across the pond, yeah. checking in, yeah. representing the UK. That's my girl. That's I'm my girl. saluting you right now. Um, I like to look at your faces, uh, but I like to also listen live, and uh, I like to do both. I'm d I'm doing double bubble. I've got both of you in my eyes and both of you in my ears. So um, I've been out drinking tonight. I've got some whiskey. I've got my go packs and I am ready. She's Bring it ready. on. She's ready to go. Hey ho, Pip Pip. Pip Pip. Pip Pip. Tim Tim. And Ron. Tim Tim. And Indeed. Cheers to you, Julie Prims. Um, what I can say is true, true local in our town. Uh, Julie Prims from, as she likes to say, across the pond. Yeah. Uh -huh. We said it first, and she just adopted it to make it make fun of us. And now it's kind of cool. That's it. Um, I like that she's she's doing the auditory and the 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 ocular because at this point, like, if you really are into it and are fans only, you can get our sweaty t-shirts. <laughs> you, no, okay, there should be another thing. Mellow like, vision. <laughs> like socks? Well, when you get a load of these. <laughs> no, it would have to be because I can't sell anything gross like that. Like there's like everything's gross that guys do, but the one thing I could sell, any of my fucking fucking robbing band bandanas when I go out that always yeah. smell like weed <laughs> and my my uh, non aftershave and cigarettes. 
Hey, you guys want this? You know what Uncle Pete's been smoking. Oh, I mean, my boy Pete, unless you've known him this long. Meow. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. We'll be auctioning those off uh, through, <laughs> at the end of the month. That's right. My boy Pete's sweaty face mask bandanas They're will be auctioned off sweaty, at the end of the bro. month. They're just full of different kinds of smells. <laughs> None of them are <laughs> Sean, I'm like a cover girl. I glow. Never let him see you sweat. I smoke like a chimney when it comes to anything and everything, which yeah. might have led to the discoloration on the different beard sides, but also. It's that. It's give me my last that. smoke, John. <laughs> Make it through the heart, Jimmy. Well, I think to that. Well, I think to I that like because, not, you know, I feel like it was not, 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 arms, not only a call to arms, arms for everyone listening, which we truly appreciate, but it was also a reminder. Do you have to do diligence, John. This is the two sided. Two sided. Everyone who's listening will eventually learn you got to get your two sided go bags ready. Your two sided go bags consist of those, those little airplane shots or a whole bottle if you're looking froggy. You have a couple of smokes, whatever they may be, and whatever your preference is, a flashlight, some batteries. 14 feet of bailing wire, brass knuckles, one for each hand. The list grows and grows. But right now, open that first pocket and get out those shots. Start pouring them because we're going to do some shots. Thanks, Julie, for listening. We always appreciate you out and about and coming home to the smooth, dulcet sounds of the two sided. Here's to you, girl. From across the pond. I would absolutely buy a sweaty t shirt or a weedy bandana. So that smell. Um, but, you know, we'll have to work on the other two senses. A touch and taste. Yeah, just saying. Correct. I've been trying to pitch John on the two-sided lollipops. He's like, what that is what we do when we take my weedy bandanas and the sweaty t-shirt smells and we, we parboil them, right? Uh -huh. And we reduce them in a fine barrel-aged whiskey with the resin of both of our pipes, right? And right. then... We put that into a sucker, right? Yeah. But in the middle of that sucker, we put a, a tequila-soaked gummy that's been infused with THC and uh, hash. So it's a whole yeah. thing. How many licks does it take to get the center of the two-sided? You're going to have to ask Julie Prunes. <laughs> She's the only one who's ever been that far. <laughs> well, the tequila-soaked gummy is obviously a, a gummy worm. Yeah. And you parboil. Well, I like to blanch mine, but you know it's it's pretty much the same risk. Oh, same thing. But I, you know, blanching. I just don't have the time to waste ice like that, John. Ice is for cocktails. <laughs> I don't have cold enough water to blanch, John. The only good blanch in my life was from Golden Girls, and I will stand by that. Thank you very much. That's a hundred percent true, my friend. That is a hundred percent true. <laughs> right? Just saying. I'm just saying. Well, I'm um, just saying, let's start the show. I'm saying we should, too. <sighs> Hold on to your butts, everybody. We're about to begin. Well, howdy. Vitriol and hate that kid, you still refuse to do a better recording of that bullshit. If it was you and a subway on your fucking flip phone. <laughs> All right, fine. Go ahead. I'm John L. Peacock out in Brooklyn, New York. And I'm my boy Pete in Southern California, and I can't believe that nothing has changed with all of my hate, all of my rage, all of my fist shaking in the heavens, but yet I am. <sighs> Neptune. <laughs> and you're listening to Two Sided, a live recorded bo bo podcast where each week I challenge Pete with a bit of the two sides of life, the serious and the fun. Did the right and the wrong, John, the me and the you, the yes and the no, baby. Keep up. You're putting on homeless gloves because we're getting serious about this. It's cold in here. I was going to not wear homeless gloves because we get my balls busted. That's too cold. I'll be homeless. Okay. It's cold. <sighs> I'll start a tire fire. Go. Hey, you got any, you well, spare change? Uh, this next uh, part is actually perfect with how you look. Um, uh, my boy Pete, I, I, I want to ask you, how are you feeling in a parable? In like a Bible parable? John, 
Here's the deal. There was once a very, very cold day. And early in the morning, I had a worker come to me and he said, I'm so cold, sir. Tears in his eyes. He said, sir, I'm so cold. So cold. Strong man. Very strong man. Give him a jacket. Halfway through the day, it's 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 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. It's it's you know, sun's sun's up, still a brisk, still a breathy. Second worker, sir, my hands are so cold. My hands are so cold. I say I will give you gloves, but I will take the fingers. I didn't say that. I gave him the fingers, but I gave him two different parts, two equal but separate parts. Third man comes says. I'm so cold. I said, sir, it is but four o'clock. You are quitting at 4.30. You do not need gloves. You do not need fingers. You do not need a coat. You need a better attitude. John, I guess the moral of my story, what I'm getting at is prep for the worst. Expect your fingers to fall off in the best. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that will be in the Genesis of my boy Pete's Bible. That is correct. When we start the cult, it's going to be in Genesis. Before that, it's going to be in a pop-up book that I'm going to sell to a bunch of kids. we got to get them young, folks. we got to get them young. <laughs> and in the pop-up book, all the fingers from your gloves pop out. <laughs> they all come up, and then the fingers fall off. Ah! No, just the fucking glove tips, kids. Fingers there. We haven't figured out how to make that part work yet. All right, it's a parable. It's a movies. parable. Come on! You like loaves? You like fishes? That's going to be... What about fissures? <laughs> <laughs> Any medical condition? Anyway, that's my parable, John, and I'm sticking to it. I'm cold and I ain't got no finger gloves. I ain't got no finger gloves. So I just take a photo of my bottle of whiskey with your faces on my iPad in, in the background to send it to your Insta message. I've just realised that where I've taken the photo, it looks like the brand of my whiskey is Dead Rabbi. It's Ooh, actually Dead uh, Rabbit um, whiskey. Just thought I would clarify that up. That's in your, uh, that's in your DMs and your IG. <laughs> you boy. <laughs> you come to me. You want to get drunk here. You say, oh, you drink too long. I said, I'll be a dead rabbi by the time we finish this bottle. <laughs> Hence, me and my good buddy Moisha came up with some seed money. Dead rabbi whiskey. Oh, it'll get you fucked up like a moil never could. <laughs> Oi. And that's going to just directly lead us to our first <laughs> lightning round. Stop <laughs> it, It's time to get down. You guys been doing shots because I have been drinking all night. Usually he, he leaves a bottle in the stairwell for me, but he's there has been nothing there. I, I was having to get ready. I had all the terror of finding my eyes and everything. So I didn't have, I'm sorry I didn't have the time. It's okay. I'm just going to drink some bottle now. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, well anybody. Now. Anybody who's anybody knows that our first lightning round of the episode is always a standard Q&A. My boy, Pete, are you ready for the questions? Oh, I'm 100% ready. Let's do it. So this Q&A happens to be a history pop quiz. History pop <laughs> quiz. 1744, the War of 1812, uh, Paisley, uh, Winston Churchill. Uh, you get the theme of this history real quick. First question. Boo. I don't like the way you say that with such confidence. Boo. I'm ready. Who founded the LDS Church, commonly known to others as Mormonism? Boo. Joseph Smith, one of my closest friends and personal mentors, John. That's one for one. All right. Let's keep the ball rolling. All right. So, number two, uh, who was the second leader of that church? Uh, that was uh, Benjamin Franklin, <laughs> right after he was president. <laughs> My answer, I'm sticking to it. Final answer. Blah, blah. No, it was Brigham Young, who BYU whoa, whoa, whoa. is named was, after. No, Brigham was flying the kite. 
<laughs> True. Ben was pulling the strings in the big church. Pull the strings, Ben. Pull the strings. Dance for me, puppet. Dance for me. Yep. Uh, question number three. How many wives did each of these leaders have? Not nearly enough, John. <laughs> that is from a biblical standpoint. <laughs> from a humanitarian standpoint, hmm, two less than normal, one more than expected, four less than it called for. But John, from, from a man about town who loves the lady folk and loves them sires, just enough. That is correct. You said it uh, pretty directly. Uh, at least one more than expected. That's right. <laughs> Final question, Oops, my boy, Pete. <laughs> uh, why did the members of this church move west to Utah and the surrounding states? Prosecution, man, they were getting shot up. You don't take kindly to that kind of lifestyle around here in Missouri. We have laws where you could get shot on sight around here, boy. True statement. That's extremely true. And that is actually going to lead us straight into our first segment of the episode. Oh, is it? Would you like to talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, John? Because right <laughs> now, he suffered and died for you. And when you went through the veil of unconsciousness, what happened is you just don't know no better. I have these plates here that will tell you some real good stuff that will make you feel good. You like potlucks, you like volleyball, you like dancing. Well, you'll love all this. You'll love all the friendship. You'll love all the things. You like to sit up, sit down, no problem. You like to sing? Yep, I do. But that's all indoctrination. John, John, do you want to tell me your sins and then get a special pass to go to the special playground of all the best Mormons in the world? John, I do. Well, come on down. Well, we're about to talk about Mormonism. Uh, you bet. You better take a shot because we are going to talk about the other side of that last thing you said. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to talk about Governor Lilburn Boggs. Oh God, we're talking about Governor Boggs. Yeah, well, I I use this. I'm very respectful, so I Governor Boggs. You call him Lilburns. That's not fair. But everyone, raise a glass. Here's where we start drinking. This is where shit gets weird, folks. Bing, bing, bing. bing. Cheers, everybody. His first name is Lilburn. L I L B U R N. No apostrophe. No apostrophe. But that's bullshit. Isn't that, isn't that like a rapper name? No. Lilburn? That's it. Lil Rel. Lil Ren. Lil Uzi Vert, Lil Yachty, Lil Pico, <laughs> but most of them have LIL apostrophe or LIL space, but his is Lil Burns, all one word. Yeah. yeah. That's, he's never going to make it on the circuit with that. And he can't be a comedian. I don't know what he's thinking, John. He's probably going to have to go for government. Anyway, what did he do with his life? Uh, he shot himself in the foot with that one, for sure. So... The Missouri Secretary Thanks, of State Mom. Digital Heritage. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, Lil Burn. Why'd you name me that? Well, there was something Lil Burning when you got born. So, Lil Burn. Henceforth, Lil Burn. Go on now. So, uh, the Secretary of State of uh, Missouri Digital Heritage website introduces the public historical records collection of Missouri's former governor with this biography. It's a little dry, and this is, but this is the oh, official this is, statement. This is, this is the official statement of the website currently today, right now. Okay, yes, gotcha. right now. So, a little bit of his past because I didn't know it. I'm going to bring oh, it in. Two, folks. As of 11-7-2022, uh, what the historical Utah 23 and me, 69 and 3, says about Lil Burns Boggs is... Go on, John. Psst, 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 psst. <laughs> so the Missouri Digital Heritage says, Lil Burn Williams Boggs was born in Lexington, Kentucky on December 14th, 1796 to John M. and Martha Oliver Boggs. He fought with Kentucky troops in the Battle of uh, Tippecanoe during the War of 1812. Ooh. 
Good one. Buddy, you mentioned 1812 in the uh, in the history pop. Look at you. Yeah. You know stuff. I know, man. I took a train next uh, that had a stop on Tippecanoe earlier. Weird. It's like the, Weird. That's why I have to make a wish every time I go through a stoplight and kiss a hobo every time I see a sunset. Very strange. <laughs> so after moving to St. Louis, Boggs married Julia Bent, the daughter of Judge Silas Bent, and relocated to Franklin, Missouri. Is hey, get back! I didn't marry her. She's a delightful woman. I got bent. I got bent. Thanks. Thanks, Julia. <laughs> Julia, get back! Okay. Uh, the mercantile business uh, failed, and he obtained a position <laughs> as a deputy factor at Fort Osage. <laughs> he, uh, Osage? I'm sorry. So, no, say that again. Osage. He, 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 his business failed. His first business failed. It was a mercantile and, business. Right. No, no. So I was fa fa fascinated to like the mercantile business. In my mind, I was like, you mean like Merkins? He made a bunch of Merkins and they went sailing. Like everyone had pubes for days back in the 1800s. Yeah. He was like, oh, I can't sell these to save my life. He lost it. And then he went and did what? I, that's the part I missed because I was making Merkin jokes in my head. Well, he was using tiles as Merkins and that just didn't really catch on like the uh, other Merkins. Yeah, very, very good. If it's like a Howard Shoe, it's like a... It's like a... Kavasi, it's a very specific style. You were too early for your time. You can walk on a right. runway with that. You can walk anywhere. Right. <laughs> it's him and you Alexander McQueen, no baby. <laughs> <laughs> a deputy factory, uh, a position as deputy factor at Fort uh, Osage, I think. O S A G E. Oh, so, uh, as a deputy Osage. factor in a, as a factory factor in, de in a Fort Osage. Okay. Gotcha. I thought you said he was a. A docent in a fork. I was like, this is the cannons. These are all the damn walls and damn ceilings. He is it. Save all your damn questions to the end of the damn tour. Welcome We're to Hoover Dam. <laughs> Fuck you. I used to work at Hoover Dam. <laughs> so his wife died and he remarried in 1823 to Panthea G. Boone. Who do you think she might be the granddaughter of? Um, was it someone who was Greek who grew up in the Pantheon? Oh, wait, no, no, let's no. go the One other more reason. Yeah. Right. Uh, did she, she was the granddaughter of the Boone's Farm Empire, John? Wait. That's right. Fast forward. Loved her wine. Yeah. <laughs> Strawberry <laughs> daiquiri. Mwah. Oh, my God. Peach. <laughs> Peach vineyard. No. Fuzzy navel, baby. Oh, there you go. All right. So she, he in in something he married a, a Pantheon Pantheon <laughs> Boone who was actually related to supposedly Daniel Boone's son. But little did you know, because TMZ was back then, it was pretty understood that she was Jim Bowie's son. If you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, I'm not here to cast aspersions, John. Look that shit up. Moving on. Pantheon, carry on. Well, they did have 12 kids together, so you might be correct about that, because she'd like to do at least one thing. I know. We all like hobbies, John. Some of us like drinking. Some of us like other things. So he then went to Independence, and that's where he started running for election. He immediately uh, was elected into the Missouri House of Representatives, right what after year? moving to Independence. 1826. 1826, okay? Yep. And then 1830, the Missouri Senate. Just moving up the ranks Ooh. every election cycle. Come on. 1830, come on. What else we got? What else we got? Moving he served on as lieutenant, to lieutenant governor. Missouri side. To the big <laughs> old blue Ozarks in the sky. You like fishing for cops. Oh, maybe blue gill. I fucking love me some Missouri. Except for the ticks. <laughs> anyway, 1830, he was that. Then he moved on up to a lieutenant. Lieutenant governor. 1832 to 1836. 32 to 36. Okay. A nice little run of four year stint as a LT. Yep. Any any policies that he was enacting during those times that we should be aware of that are setting the stage for the things that we are know should be to be the precursors yet to come, other than losing Julia and marrying a pantheon. At this time, it really seemed that Lieutenant Governor was nothing more than the person to take over. The governor died, which makes sense because a lot of people died suddenly back then. 
this is like the two-sided pop. I'm the lieutenant host of this show. If John suddenly dies of diphtheria, I'm going to run this motherfucker right into the ground. My evidence for that's coming shortly after the rest of this uh, silly little bio. Um, <laughs> remember, I'm quoting everything right now from the Missouri um, Secretary of State website. Yeah. No, this is all. This is all. This is all not your words. These are all fun facts that other people wrote in a website. So when Governor Daniel Dunklin resigned in 1836, Boggs filled the remaining three months of Dunklin's term and then was elected in his own right. He was sworn into as the sixth governor of Missouri in November 23rd, 1836. Okay. Escalating tensions between the increasing numbers of Mormons, Mormon immigrating to Missouri and settlers already residing in the state marked Boggs' gubernatorial term. No, I don't have time to talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, or to have a casserole. <laughs> Holy shit. On October 27th, 1838, after a series of clashes between Mormon and anti-Mormon forces, Boggs ordered Mormons driven from the state. Moving on, in 1842, Boggs was shot through an wow. open window. Wait, That's wait, all they have. Wow, John. No, but uh, That's okay, all they so have. you're quoting all the things. You're... You're not even letting us take time to breathe and discuss anything or digest. You're making a point that all they have is there are clashes between Mormon and anti-Mormon factions in 1830. Forces. Yeah. Forces. <laughs> and then he was shot through a window in 1842. Yeah. Yeah. Four years later. That's right. the next thing they have. All right. So apparently they hit 1.21 gigawatts, John. <laughs> we <laughs> skipped over that part. <laughs> <Holy> <laughs> So this is this is how this is what we call whitewashing history, which is the beautiful thing of like, let's just think about the people and not what they did or what they stood for at the time or the things that went on. These are just elected officials. You guys like figureheads? This is what we got. <laughs> and he was number six. <laughs> Holy shit, balls, John. This is what's wrong. Oh my god. I'm already I'm already starting to write my own obituary because I don't want figurehead shit like and this is gonna be on a plaque. I'm gonna like all the money from the show. Little do you know I'm siphoning it off from my headstone. It's gonna be a choose your adventure where you hit buttons and I'll say shitty things to you. Oh, it's gonna be great. I miss him so much. Hey, you look stupid. Fucking get dressed in the dark, you dummy. Like, I don't miss him so much. Awesome. See you next time. <laughs> so, like I said, it jumps to 1842, shot through an open window while reading the newspaper at his home in Independence. He survived the attempted assassination and in 1847 left Missouri for California. Bog settled in Sonoma and operated a successful store during the California Gold Rush. He was a member of the first California Constitutional Convention. He died nice. March 19, 1860, and was buried with his wife in uh, Tuluke? Pantheon? Tuluke, Tuluke, in Napa, California. Toluca. No. There's a Y at the end. You're a, you're a Y dude. But did he, did he die with the bear of Pantheon? What happened to Julia? Where was Julia no. buried? Back, back east. That's bullshit. They didn't dig her up. Uh, well, here's the deal, John. If he had listened to Joe Smith a little more, he would know that he was going to be with Julia for all eternity. And he would have thought a little bit longer about getting all shacked up in the grave with Pantheon, if you know what I mean, John. Uh -huh. That's why it's good to be an agnostic atheist. Like, I'm unsure about it, but eh, whatever. So, so that's it. That's the total of his, uh, of his intro biography. Okay, so I'm, I'm guessing there's more. Right? Do you have more, so, John? Is that just what? You're that's it. Say? All right. All right. That's the episode. Bye, everybody. No. Right, okay. So this enough. dry obituary style biography happened to uh, uh, leave a couple of things out. So we are going to talk about what wasn't mentioned. Oh, I can't wait, John. It's gonna be awful and horrible and good and the worst. It's gonna leave a horrible taste in your mouth, and I promise you, we will drink after and wash those demons away. That's right. If you believe in demons. If you don't. <laughs> I hope you leave and get drunk. <laughs>
Either way, we're drinking. So first, Boggs was a staunch Democrat. And uh, though he died three years before the Civil War broke out, he, it was very vocal about which side he would have uh, fought for. Uh, during his and, state... Yeah. And, and just to clarify, because this took me long, I don't like... Previously, Democrats were Republicans. Well, they were pro slavers. Let's let's not even uh, relate them to the. They don't look like no. None of the um, but, parties of but, then look like the parties right, of today. Right. No. Right. I don't. But but the, the problem that I have is that the way that our political structure is, uh, the lexicon we use is the same we use in the tech and medical industry, where it's oh, this is like 0. 0.5, 0. 1, 0, like. Why does everything have to say engine in it? Because it's like, what do you mean? I now have to think about like, what year were we talking about? Because is it like art engine? Is it engine this? Is it engine that? Is it is it enterprise this? Like, what are we what are we talking about? So yeah, when you say Democrat, my thought was like, oh, the Democrats. I was like, no, 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 not the Democrats. To me, I equated to at our two party system, we were not that same system now as we were, we were, but not the same, but anyway. And your reference is right. They were for smaller government while the Republicans of the time were for bigger government. And that switched Correct. in the mid-ish uh, 20th century, right? So that's the Correct. big flip, but also they were the South and they were, you know, uh, they were they the first whole, slave. Right. They did a whole Freaky Friday thing. Right, yeah, exactly, yeah. The, the Southern uh, Offensive, uh, I forget the name, but whatever. It wasn't, it wasn't Parent Swap, it was Freaky Friday. <laughs> like, oh, That's right. Funny. So, um, do, 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 do. John, 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 what if there was a, it's horribly distasteful, it's probably awful. No, it's not, if we do it in the right way. John, John, yeah. John, hear me out. We'll make, we'll make it classy. We do, we'll make it super classy. It's right as the Civil War starts and two brothers from the same family, because it's like Civil War is awful. Like families, you know, brothers fighting brothers and this and that. So it's, it's the brothers who are like separated with their families in the town. And then they get together and they fucking freak and fight. It's like, what are we going to do to get our union back together? I don't know. Maybe I'd go with your union and we go to your union and we'll go to our vacation spot. We'll make a picnic. And then, <laughs> come on. Abraham Lincoln, come on, let's go on a hike. <laughs> John, just I'm just saying, it's really good and it's historical. <laughs> let's pitch yeah, it. Totally. Netflix totally. buys anything these days. <laughs> anyway. But, but they don't, it'll only last one season, no matter how good it is. <laughs> anyway, uh, his during his uh, state congress stint, quote, Boggs became closely identified with the Jacksonian Democrats, then in control of the state. He was nearly always teamed up with the senior U.S. Senator from Missouri, uh, Thomas Hart Benton, and the Democrats who ran the state. So he was he was not only like voting that way, but he was in with the in people. And because of his loyalty. Boy. Yeah, he was a good old boy. Yeah. Because of his loyalty to the party, as well as his power base in the western part of the state, Boggs was chosen by the Democratic Party to run for um, uh, for governor. No, okay. for governor. Oh, yeah. No, sorry. This is uh, originally uh, run for lieutenant governor with uh, Daniel uh, Dunklin as governor. And they both were elected with a major comfortable majority. The the Democratic uh, system that was in place in Missouri was very strong during this time. And so they were basically Great, yeah. right yeah. down the line. Everyone who ran Democrat uh, was getting in. Yeah. 18, 1832 was a crazy year. John. When I look back on that, I was like, whoa, 32 to 36 was ridiculous in my book. <laughs> so... Then, in 1835, when Boggs and several other senior Democratic Party officials met in convention to nominate the slate of candidates, they nominated him to run for governor and kicked uh, Dunklin out. Yeah. So Boggs received the nod for governor, ran against uh, the St. Louis businessman um, uh, William Henry Osley, who was a, a Whig Party candidate, and the Democratic machine got behind the candidacy, the party's entire ticket was elected. And in the summer of uh, 1836, Daniel Dunklin resigned. 
so that he could come in early. They pushed their own member out to because he wasn't doing enough of the, the stuff they wanted, and they knew that Boggs yeah. would. And that's how I knew that the, the lieutenant governor can't really do anything, so they wanted to give him the real power. Yeah, no, 100%. The thing is, if you know any Dunkelmans, and I know the Dunkelman family, John, he was a co-host of America and Idol season one, uh-huh. back when Justin loved Kelly. Uh-huh. Anyway, we got rid of him after that because no Dunkelman is a good Dunkelman, is what I would say. That's the old t-shirt, that's the old saying, the old adage, John. That's right. Uh, so if Daniel, a, if you want a parable for him. <laughs> Uh, so Daniel Dunklin is gone, uh, and um, Boggs immediately got to work right even before his uh, own election term started in '36. So uh, appeasing those Whigs left in office and their constituents while promoting and fulfilling the Democrats' desires. The highest priority uh, Boggs brought to the governor's office was uh, chartering of the Bank of the State of Missouri. That was the first thing he did. Yeah, yeah. No. Fast forward, you're, you're getting bogged down. No, no pun okay. intended. <laughs> so he uh, created something that appeased both parties because it was half private, half public, and they could make their own money. Um, and everyone got rich, funny enough. Yeah, uh, he also yeah. started the charter for public schools, all white, obviously, um, because uh, Missouri was still very much a slave state, and he was still into 1800s. that. 1800s. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he also had a, a new Capitol building uh, built in Jefferson City, and a whole lot of money went missing, and he was blamed for it, but was never uh, ultimately uh, censured, never formally well, censured yeah. for it. 100%, 100%, John. Anybody who knows anybody knows about Jeff City. If you're local, it's not Jefferson City, it's Jeff City. And anybody who's anybody knows about contractors. You can't trust them, am I right? I had a That's guy right. come in for a pool, right? All of a sudden, boom, $700,000 was missing. Like, what is this all about? Anyway, pool's a week late. So you want to come swimming in December? So the most public scandal of Boggs' administration was the handling of the so-called Mormon War in western Missouri in the fall of 1838. Boggs, who personally disliked the Mormons, as a clannish group of religious zealots that caused problems wherever they went, overreacted to difficulties in uh, uh, Gallatin, Missouri, in August of 1838, when the riot broke out. In the proceedings what you're saying election. right now, these are all your words now, you're not quoting them, correct? Right. Right, so what you said is that he overreacted to what happened in Gallatin, Missouri. Yes. In, in John L. Peacock's thoughts and ideas, the uprising, was so severe in the eyes of, of Governor Boggs that he called for reaction. John thought was over the top and inappropriate because it was, in all appearance, not severe in John Peacock's eyes. Apparently, well, John Peacock certain- has not dealt with many Mormon uprisings. Anyway, John, <laughs> hello, I'm the devil, Zadvocate. Nice to meet you. <laughs> So they were not allowed legally to vote in the state of Missouri, and they thought that was unjust. So they went to the uh, the local county and uh, demanded uh, their right to be able to vote. And that's what's caused the so-called riot. Yeah, horseshit. Yeah, they should not be able to, John. They're an evil people with a horrible soul and a great casserole recipe. That's all they have to offer us. <laughs> so Mormons sent alarming reports to Boggs and petitioned for him for troops to put down a rebellion of the Mormons against state authority. As a result, Boggs ordered the uh, commanders of seven divisions of state militia to stand ready to march and deploy on, on to, uh, a small peacekeeping force within western Missouri. So he got things ready. Oh, yeah. Boy Scouts, man. John, <laughs> that's what we talk about the go bags all the time, man. Sometimes you got to get ready. I'm not jumping right now, but when I need to, I'm ready to jump. Says the two sided fans with their go bag ready to go. So 
more uh, Mormon militia men uh, had skirmishes with the uh, anti-Mormon forces, and he placed General John B. Clark uh, to command and gave him explicit instructions on October 28, 1838, for dealing with the Mormons. This was known as Executive Order Number 40, Missouri Executive Order Number 44, and it said, "Quote." The Mormons must be treated as enemies and must be exterminated or driven from the state as if as if necessary for the public peace. Their outage, outrages are beyond all description, end quote. All right, Clark, you seem to be shaking your heads like you don't understand the problem. What are you not understanding? Outrageous beyond belief, Clark. Have you had their casseroles? That's why he's so soft. The casseroles are delicious, Clark. Here's the deal. They have dances every Friday night, but then they insist on making room for the Holy Spirit? Oh, ho, ho. no, Clark. We will not let these abominations stand. And you go in there. I need you, by the power of Missouri, executive order number 44, do your Missouri given right. Quash this uprising. I'm paraphrasing, John, but I'm pretty sure that's how it is. That was probably pretty close. This was uh, Maybe, later, yeah, later to be known as the extermination order. Uh, it... Uh, the declaration led directly to the state militia's attack on several families of the Mormons at Juan Mill on October 30th, killing 18 and wounding another 15. Yeah, but those were rabble-rousers, John. The whole thing, it's all blown out of proportion, right? Yeah. <laughs> they were causing problems, see? John, I'm just saying. I've once been a governor, Boggs. I've had the whole of the entire 1938 community in my hand. I was like, I don't know what to do. With one stroke of a pen, I can make an executive order and I can, dare I say, yet again, quash this uprising. I dare. I dare. But yet again, where is humanity? Where is the justice? Where are the napkins? I have mustard all over my hands. I'm thinking like Boggs right now. I feel like Boggs would always be mustardy. Anyway, I uh, I have a, a I'm, 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 no, keep going, keep going. No, I'm, I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate because like, ah, fuck them. But no, yes, you should be allowed to vote, yes. You know, we don't like what you do and how you talk and you knock on my door. How nice you always seem to be. Con- I can't make eye contact with you if you, if you were in pairs. Shit, I didn't want an hour conversation. Ah, uh, hello, Elder. How are you? Shit. Shit. We have some hardcore ones out here. Because you know they get your name, right? Like they get your... The yeah, database, baby. Oh, yeah, you're in. And I'm apparently flagged in some way, shape, or form. They know about me, and I'm like, I'm like a trouble spot. I'm like, I don't give a shit. I'll talk to anyone. But I'm sitting on my porch having cocktails, smoking cigarettes. I'm like, yeah, you want to sit here? Yeah, by all means. You want to talk religion? <laughs> I'm going to wreck your head, kid. Oh, you're 18? Oh, my child. Come unto me. <laughs> sit down. I was almost a fun. minister. Oh, you're gonna get. You're gonna get. Oh. Do you want to buy weed? And if you do, can you go in halves? Because I also want to buy weed. How much of an allowance do they give you? Right. Can what are we, we looking at? Minis- can we use your uh, LDS card to get there? My shit was pounding a bad drug deal gone wrong. Where, where are you going? Allegedly. Hey, can I come? You guys gonna proselytize? Oh, I'm down with that. Can I come? What's up? Elder. So. <laughs> Elder. All right, call me. And that's why you're flagged. 
come back every two years and they get all frisky. Uh-huh. Hey boys, what's happening? <laughs> Nope, nope, still, still, still uh, touched by the devil. Okay, we'll come back in two years. Hopefully, hopefully he'll find his way. <laughs> Why are you guys putting salt around my house? I thought you guys weren't into that weird wicked stuff. All right, fair enough. Salt That's up. why we're trying everything. Oh, yeah, blessings have not done nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I wake up to goat's blood on my porch. Like this is ridiculous. Oh wait, that was me. Forgot that was me. We were out last night, pretty late partying. Don't worry, it's not my goat's blood. It's someone else's goat's blood. So October uh, 38th, after the executive order was made, Boggs' state troops surrounded far west and demanded the surrender of Joseph Smith and his key lieutenants. They did surrender, and uh, the militia commander had the Mormon leaders court-martialed and ordered to be their, ordered their execution. But uh, a, a lawyer... Um, the only lawyer present well, posted, uh, protested the decision and promised legal action against the militia commanders, and they did not execute the Mormon leaders at that time. They they oh. sent them to a jail to await the civil trial. Right. It's it's, a, it's the grown up version of I'll tell your mom. Fucking I'll tell you're gonna get busted. Oh. I'm going to beat you up right now. Ooh, I'm going to cry at your front porch. You're going to get in trouble. All right. We're going to throw you in a ditch for the afternoon. You stay there. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, think about it. Like, so again, it's they, they surrendered. They immediately said, all right, we're going to hold a court martial five seconds later. All right, let's go. So they're like they're basically saying string them up. I'm sure they didn't go through all the formalities that it sounds like there uh, because that lawyer was like, dude, 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 no, 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 no. That's not the way to yeah, do it. But at the same time, at the same time, if you're thinking, if you're going that line, that was like, oh, we're going to lynch him. And all it takes is one, one guy who's about to be hung, who, who, who lynched, who's like, bah, 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 um, uh, bah. you like money? I got money. What about women? No. Ah, this is illegal. Holy <laughs> shit, that worked. Guys, guys, lean into the legal thing. We're going to get him. Yeah, legally, see? Let me approach the bench, sir. Where his accent change so quickly? <laughs> yeah, see? John, it has to be one or the other. They're either yeah. like, oh, we're going to cart. This is the way the legal system works and blah, blah, blah. We respect everything and like, nope, nope, you will die. Like, uh, objection. A point of order. You cannot kill us unless we've had a trial. Oh, well, I do say he does have a point. All right. Put them in the brig. We will kill them later. I mean, execute them. I mean, free them from their bodily cords. Oh, again. So they escaped a year later, and it's widely uh, rumored that they were allowed to escape by civil authorities uh, who f- viewed the trial as meaningless at, at that point. Then they went to Illinois and off to their own fate. So Boggs, in 47, then moves to California, right? On that trip, he was with uh, a certain um, party uh, that uh, became famous for trying to cross uh, over the Rocky Mountains, but didn't quite make it so far. <coughs> Uh, Donner Party of Four, uh, Donner Party of Three, shit, Donner Party of Two. Is anyone with this table? Donner Party of One. I guess you're not hungry anymore. Come on down. That's correct. He was with the Donner uh, family for a while. But there was a decision to take this really great new, newly found shortcut over the Rockies, and his party decided to split off from the Donners and go the normal route the long way around. <laughs> you boys like Mexico? <laughs> no, I, I don't. I'm trying to get over the pass. All right, follow me! <laughs> how how do you have a standard good way to fuck up and a new way is a good way? John, 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 it makes no sense. John, is what you're saying to me that I should go against every instinct I have and just, you know what? Safe and steady, maybe wins the race, but doesn't have any fun. No. Set fire to our hair and run around. <laughs> Nor does it have any as many barbecue courses. Right. 
Oh my God. Barbecue? Love it. <laughs> Can you imagine that? He was literally one decision away from being eaten. Yes, but no, he was an eater. He was an eater of men. He would have been... He oh, he would have been eating, but I, I don't think he would have made it to the end. I think he would have eaten and then been eaten. I don't know. Apparently, you don't know. Uh, little, little man Bob's. The guy know him. <laughs> little, 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 little Bob's. <laughs> little, little fusion Bob's. He's a lot smaller <laughs> than the normal Bob's, but still just as tenacious. So the extermination order stood for 138 years. It was not until June 25th, 1976, that Missouri Governor Christopher Kit Bond rescinded it, calling it unconstitutional. Um, so here's a little something to find, John. My, my dad, he's like middle child of four. I guess there's no middle, but I mean, if you're going to split a baby, you got to do it. In the <laughs> um, he, uh, he had, uh, grew, uh, his, my grandparents were in Missouri. His older brother started dating a Mormon, he ended up getting engaged to a Mormon, where he's, as we all know, going to a Mormon school, you're gonna convert so you can yeah. marry your thing. And as soon as she came around, as soon as they got serious, my grandma would say at the dinner table, I miss the days when you shoot a Mormon on sight at dinner. <laughs> like my dad was like <laughs> 15, so he's like, what? <laughs> I remember, like my dad told me that because they would come and visit. He still, they were married. They stayed married. He turned Mormon. They went on a mission as adults. They were super Mormon. He wore the crazy ass underwear. Yeah. Good dude. But it's like, Jesus Christ, man. So my dad, like, we were fucking people. My dad, once I was old enough, he'd text like, ah, you know, my grandma <laughs> didn't like that very much. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Missed the days when you could shoot a Mormon on sight because that was the that was the executive order that stood where if you see a Mormon you could shoot them, and that was like it. And it went until in the mid seventies, where, and it never it was never used as a as a point of defense in Missouri, but that was legal scholars were saying it could be that it was like you no know, you just killed a Mormon. They're not people. Oh, yeah. It's like throwing likes and sub subscriptions and notifications of the two-sided pod. They're not people. They don't feel it. Yeah. Just subscribe and like. Just hit the alert button. It doesn't harm them. They're not people. They're animals. It, they can't be harmed. They have no feelings. They have no feelings. Come on now. Come They're definitely on. not sentient. All right. So <laughs> last thing. In 2019, uh, the Salt Lake Tribune had a scathing commentary on the president at the time saying he was not to be likened to Hitler, but to Governor Boggs. Jesus Christ. Wow. And that was which Tribune? Who Tribune? Salt Lake Tribune, baby. Salt oh. Lake City. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's a rough one. That's a rough one, bro. Like, wow. Hitting hard on the Hitler, but getting bogged in there too. Like, oh, are you really? You're more of a Mussolini to me. You're very stylish. You <laughs> really like what you've done with the Hugo Boss. However, the policies uh, leave something to be desired. Right. Can we workshop it? I like your charisma, but you're fucking all over the place. <laughs> So we got a couple of messages, and uh, then let's do a shot and move on. Are we done? Are we oh, done? Yeah. And that was a series? That was a series. Oh, my God, thank God. The fun I can only wait is going to be <laughs> dreadful if John <laughs> that was serious. You guys, we're going to play the messages. 
you're ready for shots. Get your go bags out. Get your shots ready. Bags out. Get the shots ready. If you're just tuning in now, that link, that link, we're going, we're live on YouTube right now. If you're listening to this after, or you can catch it on Spotify, Apple Pod, Amazon Music, all the good, all the good things. Fans only, Patreon, farmers only. We are anywhere that you want to be. Pop those bubbles, John. Yeah, it's the John and Pete show. Yeah. Yeah. Get to the chopper. Yeah. That's out. Ah. Ah. So thank you. No. 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 Play the next one, John. House smoking a bong. And fucking smoke rolling out the house smells like crying. Yep. <laughs> and. People knock at the door, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons. Come on in. I'll sit and listen to your spiel if you sit and listen to mine. Exactly. That's a timetable. This could be a game show. I'm saying. And nine times out of ten, they bite. <laughs> we end up talking about, you know, aliens and stuff. Because, yeah, dude, most of the time, I, I went to college in Arizona, and I didn't know it was – very Mormon when I went there. I thought it was all theater. Oh, yeah. No. And so I became aware like halfway through my first year because I'm not very perceptive. <laughs> the first, 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 theater, music, theater, music. Why are there all these people wearing white shirts? <laughs> oh shit. That's why you're all friendly and have casseroles. <laughs> I found like, yeah, you can do that. It's like I, I was roommates with some of those guys after they came back from their missions and you realize you're, they're fucking kids. All they want to do is have fun and if they can talk baseball or movies or football or aliens or something that like is not like your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Like, oh my God, you have, you have soda and you have food and like we can sit here and hey, I'll proselytize if we can watch cartoons like we're not watching it you can talk whatever you want to i have cartoons on here's a pepsi and a hot pocket i'm gonna turn this up and you talk however you want as long as you want i'm watching cartoons you'd have them there for like an hour and a half like, it's awesome. It's awesome. awesome shout out to the overzealous dude in uh the youtube chat that you guys still to this day ignore when was the first time i told you no I, <laughs> anyway there, there's a yeah it's funny he's been going the fuck off he he's very enthusiastic John, you gotta on YouTube this year. my buddy joey was all on youtube and so he kept pinging us because a lot of people who are watching i found the people i know don't go to stereo they go to youtube and he, they're typing messages to us. I'm like, why are you? Fuck, ah, he's losing his mind when you're saying stupid things and I'm correcting with more stupid things. He's losing his mind. You're an idiot. Like two days later, like, what are you doing? What this was? That's insane. <laughs> and like we have an argument about a topic that we went deep on and we we're both horribly wrong. John, you need to be watching the YouTube's. I can't. It makes me. They're giving you all our fucking secrets. What do you think this is? Some kind of goddamn conspiracy? It's not doing. What are you all looking at? <laughs> Get to that fucking chapel. Sometimes you. <laughs> nope. <laughs> not gonna do it. So that's going to lead us uh, directly into our next uh... lightning round. Tell me it down! John got a haircut and it looks like a clown! Did it? Yeah! Sorry, baby Pete, haven't said nothing about it. I just want to make a point. You look real good! Thanks, lightning round guy. Fuck him, John! You look amazing! <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Hey, let's all do a shot, huh? Oh, can we? 
I've been sitting here sober for the last hour, and it seems inhumane. <laughs> Thanks Cheers, for everybody. In, everybody. Cheers. Bing, bing, bing. Duke. Drink. And, and, done. Drink. We'll done. and cheers to the YouTube people that watch it. So, uh, Spondy is uh, is uh, loving what we're saying, and uh, and uh, MFA is on, and Julie's on, and they're all loving it, oh. and they're all talking to each other. It's great. Looks looks fantastic. How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, hey, you doing? How are you doing? What we do, we like to bring community together. Like people may not meet unless we cause such a goddamn commotion that they all come together to see what the train wreck's about, and that. Is what we do on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. The train wreck that you know and love, the two sided pod. Folks, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your parole officer, we'll be here for you. And if you don't want, if you're not watching us now, but you want to, just go onto our YouTube channel. Our handle is at TWO Sided Pod, all one word, two sided pod. And you can see our beautiful mugs, you can see some past shows, and you can also join us live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Pacific and 11 p.m. Eastern when we go live onto the YouTube channel. He's so proud of himself when he does that. The <laughs> same mugs, and he looks like when he's done. When he's proud, he is. as an actor, as a poker player, like both horrible tells. Like I hope you train yourself to not do that. But I did a monologue. Well, it looks like uh, this uh, next lightning round uh, uh, section uh, segment is very. Apropos, because we are doing the negative Nelly. That's right. Pete's already in it. He's in it to win it. Wow. He is the negative Nelly. Well, I wouldn't say I'm negative, John. I'm just saying I'm truthful. <laughs> hey, <laughs> negative Nelly, Pete. Maryland and Missouri now have legal pot. Well, Maryland and Missouri can kiss my ass. I got a ticket in Maryland and then went to Missouri and got another ticket for weed four years ago. They can suck it. So, negative Nelly Pete, uh, finally, there's funding to bring arts and music into all California public schools. Ugh. John, let me just tell you one thing. Have you ever been to a recital from fourth grade to seventh grade? Yes, I have. It is worse than listening to your partner tell you about her day. I'm just saying. <laughs> Ugh. John, let's not let's not give anyone any more money or eye contact than they need to continue with this travesty that we call a hobby. Hmm? Shall we? Thanks. Thank you, Nelly Pete. Uh, Oregon officially voted to have universal health care for every resident of the state. Uh, of course they did, John. Of course they did because they just legalized mushrooms previously. They don't know what's going on. They're in a world of doos John. John. <laughs> what do we, we think of universal health care? Like we're some European country or some Canada country. Some may say Canada. I don't. John, John, John. Do you think that we could be like any other modern society, John? I think not. <laughs> Fuck you, Oregon. It's a mushroom. And finally, negative Nelly Pete. Uh, you hear about all the awesome rights Michigan voted into being last week? Oh. Oh. Yeah. No, I heard a lot about Michigan. I've heard a lot about Michigan a lot lately. All right. First off, I've seen dirtier mittens in my day. If you've hung out with me, you know what dirty mittens look like. Number one, so don't claim that shit. That's our word. Number two, oh, you're going to give rights to women? Oh, like they didn't have before? Oh, like they're going to keep them? Oh, like it's like the shell game, John. You see three car money on the street, you get a ticket. How do I know? I make my money doing three-card money, John. <laughs> That's how I have a sprinter's body. I run quickly. That's when I follow lady, 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 gives you a hundred. Follow lady, lady, lady. Nope. You like your rights? Find your rights. Find your rights. Rights going to get you five. Rights get you 20. Nope. Right for you? Nope. Oh, shit. Took your uterus away. 
Fuck you, Michigan. That's my uterus, and I will use it how I please. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> oh, that's too much. Was that too much? That's I, think, I think for negative Nelly Pete, it was just enough. <laughs> just perfectly enough. John, it's like you let the beast come out every once in a while. It's like, hey, boy, you rattle the cage. Hey, buddy. Hey, you want to yell at things? Fuck yeah, I do. Who's going to be a good boy? Not me. No, you're not, are you? I'm not. You fuck shit up. I'm going to fuck shit up. All right, boy, go get him. <laughs> he me back in with a hot pocket. Shuts me down. Tell me, John, what's our fun segment about? Back in the cage. <laughs> yeah, it, normally with this one, it takes you a couple to get into it. But since you were already negative nailing me, that's what just like that was. That's how they got the train going, man. <laughs> Full speed ahead. <laughs> John, here's the deal with you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this message uh, into our final segment. <laughs> John L. Preston as Peacock. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck <laughs> is up, and my boy P? Which one? Which one? This is good, that, John. Man? Nice to see you. Too, Another too, lightning night of two sided podcast. Least. Pulling up my chair, getting cozy, cold, pouring up a nice cold one. Oh, yeah, giddy up. There you go. Yeah, you ever? <laughs> I was doing my uh, my voice like that that guy on Instagram. <laughs> oh yeah, Here you go. Oh, yeah, a nice cold one while you play some Nintendo. You like <laughs> nice cold one? <laughs> we got the uh, any names like, um, hockey teams you know, like playing hockey on Nintendo and like picking some extravagant shit. He has, he has beautiful animals. His dogs are just oh, wild. I'm telling you, I'm all his shit too. <laughs> it's so funny when, because so that funny. makes it so good. It's basic <laughs> shit. It's like, yeah, man, I love food. I love video games. I love dogs. It's like, mm, I'm gonna eat some food. Look at this game. I'm gonna fuck some <laughs> shit up. Madden 2022, bitches. <laughs> oh shit, Seahawks. Hello. What's up, Pookie Bear? How you doing, biscuits? And it's not going to be as pleasant. <laughs> yeah, no, it's that's the thing. There's there's a there's a a formula, John. There's a fucking formula for for getting hits. And I haven't. It's there's a. I, I knew this shit. I've known this shit for fucking fifteen years. Yeah. I'm applying for Survivor. There's a formula to get a Survivor. I haven't cracked the code yet. Ooh boy, I feel like this is my year. Ooh, I've done some goddamn work in funny bits. John. In funny bits. John. 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 Not afraid of cameras. Not afraid of cameras. Like this side. Like this what about side? you? And now I'm over right? here. Why? <laughs> because the audio is better. I'm just saying. <laughs> you guys look fantastic. How's everybody doing? You gotta figure out this audio. I gotta. I gotta hook up my mic. Um, you gotta hook your yeah. mic because our stereo you gotta get a ring, man. Like you're the worst. You know, doing work. I don't like when you bring the table. I'm very upset with everything. But I don't care enough to do anything about it. I'm just gonna piss in my own infinitely shake my fist to the heavens. And we'll see what happens next, buddy. Well, let's get to something fun, huh? What do you think? Hey, can't wait, buddy. Let's do it. We're going to talk about the history of soap operas. Oh, um, I prefer if you call them my stories. <laughs> I don't believe in soap operas. That's wrestling. These are like real life events that are taking place to people. John, let's, let's dig. Ooh. Because John Addison just passed away. Ooh, that's why. That's why you're doing it, huh? Ooh, look at you. Reading headlines, knowing about, like, John Aston? Nope, John oh. Aston. That's why you got so fucking puckered. You're like, ah, maybe I'll research soap operas. Go on, John. <laughs> so the Go first on. soap operas were radio dramas that originally aired in the early 20th century, uh, 1930s-ish. 
Often sponsored by consumer goods companies, they were designed to sell products to audiences. The term soap opera uh, supposedly was uh, created by Glenn A. Larson, who wrote and produced The Guiding Light. He said the name was meant to suggest that soap operas were boring, and the play on words suggests that people can't get enough of them. But also, they were originally sponsored by major soap powder manufacturers, so nobody really wanted to publicly talk about that, but uh, it's pretty much the reason. Oh, Diane, your stockings look so shiny. Well, that's because I use Zest. It's a nice clean powder that gets all my stockings clean. Zest powder, clean your stockings, don't look like a whore. Zest. Yeah, basically without the jingle. And then the one, the other one would say, but where can I get it? Oh, you can get it at uh, blah, 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 or any local grocery mart. I'll go get some now. Thank you. Thank you. Even though your legs look like a hobo, don't look like a whore. Zest. So Yo, I'm going to tap that. Yeah, you I'm should. Gonna, gonna do don't look like a whore. John, that's going to be a new jingle for us. <laughs> John, I like your hair. It's kind of short. Don't look like a whore. Damn. Two sided. <laughs> So the 15-minute daytime radio episodes was inherited by television in the early 1950s and expanded to 30 minutes. 30 minutes is not enough, John. Yeah, right. Well, that was the point. Yeah, I know. You're telling me. My stories need to develop, John. That's just when you learn that the twin brother is alive. What are we going to do? Wait till tomorrow? No, sorry, Bob. Let's extend them. So, by keeping them so short, you were able to draw the, the, the people back every single day, right? It would always end on some high note. The twin brother, brother has been discovered, but they don't show the twin brother, and so you have to tune in next time. And maybe through half the app, that episode, they actually don't show the twin brother. And then the, the, it turns out the twin brother was actually the original brother all along. Tune in next time, right? Oh, my God. Will Luke and Laura be back together? Tune in next week on General Hospital. If you... Oh, my God. John, I'm a big fan of Bachelor. I'm a big fan of Survivor. But I'm a huge fan of Luke Laura. Yeah. <laughs> so by the mid-50s, soap operas dominated late morning and early afternoon weekday television programming as they had dominated the similar time frame in radio programming during the previous decade. So they just uh, slipped right into the same uh, time frame, but and the they and the women, mostly women at this time, the audience well, went say from that. because they were geared towards it, and we'll, we're we're no, talking yeah, about that. No, right now, you, right now, you are putting words. They're geared towards women. They're geared towards a, a personage who enjoys a more pleasant storytelling, sordid story, who has afternoons off, John. Uh huh. Right. One of these days, when one of my lady friends win that lotto, I'm going to be a house husband, and I will be watching all my stories all day, every day, all the time. John. So the first soap say, opera. This, this is a, <laughs> I know, John, right? John, I'm trying John, to smooth past that one. <laughs> John, here's the deal. Sometimes we must not look at the present in front of us. We must look to the future. Like soap operas. Continue. The first soap opera was Painted Dreams, which aired on Chicago radio station WGN in 31. It told the story of a couple, Jim and Mary Barton, who got married and struggled to make the ends meet. It quickly followed, uh, this was quickly followed by the soap opera Ma Perkins in 1932, which told the story of a widowed dressmaker in a small Indiana town. Okay. Okay, and that's in what you said, what year was that? 31 and 32, respectively. Uh, Painted Dreams okay. was the first. Um, doo -doo -doo. Wow, Ma was, Perkins was the second. Wow, that was even, that was before the executive order. That's really great. <laughs> People like entertainment. You know what? That's one thing that'll never die. That and haircuts. Right. Both shows became popular with their listeners, but it wasn't until later in the decade that soap operas became widely popular on radio. In 38, Procter and Ga uh, Gamble sponsored a new radio show called Bold Venture. It also had a serialized storyline involving Jim and Mary Barton, 
as well as characters named Doc Roberts and his daughter Sally. And here's the big one that started uh, oh. the big wave. In 43, Procter & Gamble 43. tried an, uh, again with another radio serial called The Guiding Light. Guiding Light was good. My grandma watched that. And this was a radio show. I didn't know it was the radio first. That's right. It was the big one that, that made the jump. That's amazing. No, it's no general hospital. Like, if it's not Port Charles, I don't give a shit. That's all I'm going to say. Right. <laughs> so from the 30s to the 50s, the classical American soap opera was typically a continuing play about a middle class family living in a small town. That was the general theme, just uh, different variations on it. So any sin or violence was always yes. off stage and frequently uh, affected, the, uh, affected the daily lives of the family members. But good inevitably triumphed. No, oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is where we get our formula from. All the sin takes place on camera, and it's usually a detriment to the rest of the show. But you get to be part of that. Folks, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, don't be afraid to pour that shot. Get ready for the next go-round, because John's having way too much fun. I don't enjoy this. <laughs> So the reality of housework or business rarely uh, intruded, and conversations were bound with uh, in, in intensity, but only occasionally with humor. So it was just really tense all the time, and then a light joke every once in a while. That was the formula. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, 100%. It's like when Scotty came back and broke Luke and Laura up. Ridiculous. <laughs> Bro. Port Charles is never the same. It's all drama, but you need the drama. It's like before we had real life drama of the of the Jerry Springer, of the Montel Williams, of the Sally Jesse Raphael, of that shit. Yeah. But then it was like, there's real people who are horrible like this in real life. Yeah. Oh my God, I want to watch them. <laughs> there's housewives in every city I can think of that are even worse than the people I know, married or un. This is and I can wear flip flops while I watch it. John, can't wait to participate next time. Continue, sir. So this is a fun thing that I learned. Uh, while men dominated TV broadcasting during much of its early years, soap operas were specifically tar targeted for women, and women were often hired to produce the shows and then write and act in them. Most notable and prolific figures that shaped the early days of soap operas were, first and foremost, Irma Phillips. Erna Phillips. Irma Phillips. Erna, I-R-N-A, Erna Phillips, yeah. Created Painting Dreams, the uh, Painted Dreams, the very first one, Ooh. Guiding Light, Okay. And, and As the World Turns. All right, okay. Erna, Erna, you've done me proud. My stories are happy, and you are okay in my book. Uh, and Humbert, Humbert uh, just plain Bill, Agnes Dixon, All My Children. Wait, time out. Take, take a step back, take a breath of what you're saying. Yeah. You said Hummert Bill was your next words. What does that mean? I'm sorry. I, I, I glossed over her because it's a defunct one. Uh, Anne Hummert created Just Plain Bill. And that was a soap opera up until the, the mid-70s. So that's another person who created a soap opera. Right. And Beyond Agnes. Two sides. Two sides. Yes. And continuing with another person, Agnes Nixon created All My Children. Well, I didn't like those kids anyway, so you suck at Agnes. Finally, Lee Philip Bell and her husband, yes. William Bell. Old and the Beautiful and yep. the Young and the Restless. Ugh. I'm saying Young and the Restless was great. <clears throat> it was a ripoff of Old and the Beautiful. It was the same thing. Like, oh, you like sexy people and weird ideas? Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 90210? You want to age them and put them in Melrose Place? I do. Yeah. I nailed it. <laughs> it worked before. Why can't it work again? Exactly. <laughs> if you never have a shark, you can't jump over it. Damn straight. I'm not even allergic to sushi anymore. Or shellfish, John. The world is my oyster. Let's have fun. <laughs> So gender roles began to experience a major shift during the latter half now, of the 20th century. Now, now, this is what I was thinking about. You, but you were trying to save this because you kept saying men and women. Men. Right. I mean, you're one who can't say those words 
even when I say it, like, how are you defending this? And I'm not, this is bullshit. And they go, like, oh, now we're being a general. All right, fine, fair enough. You trained me too well that I have to call shit like, nope, nope. Why do you have to say that's a, that's a guy movie or a girl movie? No, John. They're movies, they're shows, they're good or they're bad. Right, they're stories. They're your stories. Yeah, they're my goddamn stories, John. You will not ruin for me. All right. Anyway, so tell me about gender roles and how you learned to be a human. This was their first major struggle. Um, soap operas uh, started to lose their dominance in daytime TV. More and more women began to work away from the home for most of the day, uh, and soap operas' main audience started to dimi dis diminish. So producers stuck around by reinventing soap operas that were specifically aimed to attract younger viewers. By the mid-80s, dramas like General Hospital, Dallas, yes. Dynasty, Enjoyed high oh ratings. My God. Yeah. yeah, I enjoyed no. the high Ooh. ratings of its viewership increase. Most, uh, uh, most of them young adults, including men, and it was pretty split. So it was, it was now a young audience as opposed to a wide range of only female audience that they were gearing towards. So that this is how the big shift occurred. You're right. Right, and I, unfortunately, because that is how you in in any entertainment industry you. You classify your audience. You put them in the groups. You demographics, right? I, demographics. This is my demographic. This is what I'm shooting yeah. for. This is, I need to play this audience because this is my this is my breadbasket. And if I pull onesies, twosies from these other sides, great. But this is where I need to hit, and the others can follow if they want to. But if I don't hit with these guys, I don't make money. Hundred percent, hundred percent. But at the same time, like, <sighs> I have such a huge problem with that. Like. Generals and generals, like, yeah, I'll always call anyone, any person what they want to be called. I believe everyone has a right to do everything except normal Mormons. They shouldn't vote. You know, stuff. Except um, the Dutch. Goddamn Dutch. <laughs> All the way through the board, but at the same time, like, I am so specific. I'm so angry when people like, this is a show for guys. We're shooting towards women. We're shooting towards men. We're shooting towards like those comedy specials. They're like, dude, I can't handle that. That's not me. Oh, but it's a man based. Like, and then I have chick friends who are into it. And then it's like, oh my God, have you, have you watched General Hospital? <gasps> you were going to cry and scream and cry again. Oh my God. So good. Yeah. <laughs> it's a classic. Not, not fucking later on. Like late 80s, early 90s, like late, mid late. Anything with Luke and Laura, anything where afros were prevalent. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. White afros, because we didn't believe in people of color in our stories at that time. Yeah. You had to watch. Yeah. Stupid. Yeah, it's still that middle class, white America. Right. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so at, in the '80s, when this shift happened, they uh, made their uh, productions much more cost-effective, slightly smaller casts, because they had gotten wildly out of control in the '60s and '70s. And only 12 of them uh, were the major soaps were around at this point, because cable TV and satellite TV came into being. In the '90s, reality TV started to uh, was introduced, um, and it keeps on going, right? And so, right, in the early 2000s, it got crazy in the '60s and '70s, right? You said crazy in the '60s and '70s or '70s. It, that's when uh, they had huge casts, huge, uh, that, like right. real expensive. To, yeah. Right. But 70s and 80s, we're trying to clarify what you said. Not, you're not trying to. Sorry, six, 60s and 70s, right. Oh, yeah. And in the when 80s, they, they revamped. Right. Wait, so, right. So 60s and 70s when the good Coke was out. Right. Right. So things got crazy. Like, Let's hire everybody. Fuck yeah. Yes. In the 80s, <laughs> things got a little like fucking stepped on a little. Mm, okay. All right. Here's some shoulder pads and your walking papers. <laughs> Use their flock of seagulls. So, right. And so you see the steady decline, right? The, the cable, satellite TV, reality TV, then streaming. Uh, so the early 2000s, most of the soaps, including the long running ones, were canceled. Um, while my children tried to revamp itself and revive the old soap by presenting a newer cast, uh, it's clinging on, but uh, most are gone. Yep, it, everything has changed so much because now daytime TV has changed to 
weird news shit and weird uh, talk shows and random infomercial things that are like it just it used to be so good to take the day off of work to call in sick from school to like I'm gonna sleep in I'm gonna watch prices right I'm gonna watch my watch a little bit of cartoons watch my stories in the afternoon mm-hmm. then hit like oh here's like growing pains or or like family pop like no that's like seven or eight <laughs> I'm trying to, I need to get my arrows and figure out what like four or five. But yeah, you get it. Like you have your thing, it used to be good. And now it's like, yeah, you have the TV show network or the game show network or like right. TV. Right. And you can kind of go and do that, put it on the background. But at this point, it was too much. Like there's not. Right. When it was presented just fun. as Nick at Night, that was one right. thing. Like you, you had to tune in to Nick at Night and it was only on right. certain times, right? What, yeah. happened, what happened in the good old days when TV would turn off and you see the goddamn American flag and then the <laughs> John, John, what happened to those good old days? So hey, as of right when now, you had cords on your phone, you could walk out of your house and no one could call you. What happened? You didn't call me back. I was out. Fuck <laughs> off. Good old days. When the only people who had a pager were doctors and drug dealers. Yeah, the good old days. Beep, 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 beep. John, we got to pull over. <laughs> Dr. Pete says he needs to sell some products. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the nearest payphone. <laughs> to be allegedly a twofer. That's a joke. So as of right now, only four soap operas remain. Um, actually, Pete, do you want to name them? Do you want to guess them? No, I don't. No, I don't, John, because okay. it's going to be upsetting to me in the way that, that I know there's going to be two. The other one, I don't know. And the storylines are bad. I haven't kept up with them. I don't like it. I'm more in Survivor now, John. <laughs> Did you know we're on season 43? I've been declining for 14 seasons, but I feel like season 44 is my shot, baby. <laughs> Woo! I'm now putting myself in as my boy Pete. I'm like, fuck it. I'm being a personality now. You need to yeah, get a do person. It. There's no name. Yeah. There's a personality. Fuck you. You want to make friends? Fuck off. I'm an alliance <laughs> on myself. Fuck off. <laughs> not true. Not true. Joseph. Not true. I would never do that. I'd be so good. I'd be so. I'd be like a mother hen. Look, you're all safe under the branches. I'm sorry. I just watched the latest episode that came out last night, just today. I'm like super excited. John. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so those are your news stories, obviously. Uh, yeah. You should like you know all four of them. I guarantee you, you know all four. No, I know, I know. There's there's gonna be um, days of our lives. There's gonna be General Hospital. There's gonna yes, be yes. Uh, there's gonna be. Uh, we're not doing any tall novellas. That's no, where I no. love stories. That's what Richard's mom, <laughs> Lucky's mom. Oh, uh-huh. me these <laughs> like, and I couldn't understand like. I fucking get this plot. I don't understand what's happening. I don't know the words, but I'm like, right. I'm in. I'm fucking right, yeah. in. Someone has a twin and someone's getting fucked up. Girl, I'm with <laughs> you. I'm with you. Well, that's why those are still alive uh, and well. Yeah, 100%. And they know, how, they know what entertainment's like. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, we're, we're too, everyone's too like, oh, is it pleasing to this audience? Is it pleasing to this? It's like, this is good. Right. This is good. This is great. We're gonna fuck with this. Like, how do you how do you get so much dancing and music? Because it's fantastic. How do you not enjoy a, a game show when you get up and dance every five minutes, John? Right. How can you not? Tell me, if if fucking Jeopardy, if me and Belibic or whatever her name is from Jeopardy host, like. <laughs> Now's the time on Jeopardy when we dance. And they're like, burr, 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 burr. like, I'm with you. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Ken Jennings. Get that shit. <laughs> you know. So anyway, so anyway, say so, uh, days of our lives, general hospital. Mm. Young and the Restless. We're young and the Restless. Bold and beautiful. No, no, that was that was ding, ding. Yep. Bold and the beautiful. That's it. There we go. One, two, three, no, four, it's baby. It's not like I'm not an idiot savant. I'm mainly just an idiot. I'm here to fuck. 
<laughs> so uh, to wrap this up, uh, a little bit of context. So soap operas, this is a quote. Soap operas were much more progressive than they were given credit for in their era, end quote. Says Tara what? McPherson, professor at University of Southern California School of Cinema uh, Cinematic Arts. Bullshit. You spent $70,000 to get a degree and she was your mentor? Fuck off, Tara. You're an idiot. They were much more ahead of their times and they were given credit. No, they were not. You are trying to prove a thesis statement that they are still disapproving all of your papers to this day. You know what? If I can get on the newspaper, that's more backing for me. Is there any other people who say that? No, John, because it set our society back. It was the first thing that set our society back. I, I, I know that. I'm all for it. I have a strong head, a pure heart, and a soul to win, John but I'm strong in my conviction that that is great TV and it ruins the soul if you don't understand. Like, people can't behave that way. If you use these people as you're like, I'm worried about them, I think about them. My mom's best friend, who was, we call her aunt, auntie, she was so obsessed with, with soap opera people Luca yeah. Laura specifically, yeah. and there was also radio morning DJs that she would like make them gift baskets and send them, like send them things, <laughs> and send like fan stuff. Like, yeah, you know, remember how I got my restraining order, or Re Britney Spears got a restraining order against me? Like right, that yeah. kind of love, right? Like, yeah, too too much attention. <laughs> you know what I mean? He gets it. So, so, conti so continuing that quote. I'm certain the first interracial kiss my grandmother ever saw in Baton Rouge whoa. was on a soap opera. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It wasn't a soap opera. The first one was on Star Trek. That's not a soap opera. That's sci-fi. It's beautiful. Thank you, Lieutenant Okura. You are dismissed. <laughs> oh, she is dismissed. Job well done. I'll see you on the Star Deck, my lady. That's right. Uh, oh, remember, also, they were the first... Uh, TV shows to bring in female writers. Right, but, but, but. And showrunners. Uh, no, remind, uh, if you're talking those of writers and showrunners, they're, they weren't the first because we had sketch comedy that was early writing that had um, just after vaudeville when they were coming up with comedian women. Uh, I'm going to look that shit up. I got to give you actual names. But. What is, is this on the air? No, they were writing for things on the air. Okay. Okay. So I don't know about showrunners. I don't know anything about that. But I do know they were women comedians working just after vaudeville as writers for shows. Okay. So granted, okay, you're talking. In the 1930s. It, 40s. Yeah. It was right around there. It was like, it was right around 41, 42. Yeah. That. You know what they had? They said uh, Rosie the the Riveter came out and they said uh, uh, Judy the Jokester used to be here too. John, everybody gets a voice. So she attests that the soaps, character-driven, boundary-pushing, scripted serials that laid the foundation for today's critical acclaimed hits, from uh, the dystopian drama of Handmaid's Tale to the spy girl thriller Killing Eve. Quote. Boo. Hold on. <laughs> Boo. Let's take a moment. Boo. Because this is written right now. If you're talking about the dystopian world of Hammy's Tale, which is horseshit after season three because you just didn't realize you were going to continue to have likes. It's like, oh, remember Lost? Yeah, super good. Season one, two. Then, like, oh my God, there's still penis? What the fuck are we going to do? <laughs> yeah. It's like a war in the goddamn Middle East. You can't get out of it. I'm just saying. Like a land war in Asia. That's right. Nobody wins. I'm just saying. That's how I feel about this shit. It's like, oh. Handmaid said no. And Killing Eve? And that's what she went with her dis... She doesn't even watch movies, John. You can... She's a professor. She doesn't even know TV. That's bullshit. John, go ahead. 
<laughs> so fi- final quote of hers. Quote, it's impossible to imagine TV's golden age right now without the narrative structure that comes from soap operas. Okay. Okay. No, I'm with you. But the narrative structure existed previous to soap operas. They tightened it and dialed it in as far as how are you going to take the structure that, as much as I hate to say it, that Shakespeare did. Here's exactly the exact same drama. And how are we going to take all the air out of it and pack it into a half an hour of the left episode? That's all. You didn't reinvent the fucking wheel. You shrank the wheel, motherfucker. It was already there. The structure was there. You just figured out how to take the air out. That's all it is. No, I don't. No, no. She knows nothing. Your MFA is bullshit if you went to school there. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> bullshit. Well, the sources for this episode of Two Sided have been uh, first segment. Can't wait. So- if you say her name, John, so help me God. <laughs> say her name. Just fucking say her name. All right, go ahead. SOS.mo.gov, National Gover- Governors Association, History.com, Missouri Encyclopedia.com, News Leader.com, and the Salt Lake Tribune. Second segment FilmLifestyle.com, Britannica, MentalLitch.com, Medium.com, and the Smithsonian Magazine. My references for this segment. The entire goddamn show. I don't believe in going to dot coms, John. The computers track you, and that's how they steal your soul. I got boost on the ground. I talked to this guy named Larry down by the liquor store. He was like, man, I think they're after you. Like, I get it, John. That's why I need to say <laughs> soap operas are real. If I have a twin brother, so help me, you're the closest thing, and I don't like it. It's like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, tonight is your night, bro. Tonight is my night, bro. Tonight is your night, bro. Yeah, okay, that's very good. I think we should uh, play these messages uh, and uh, do a shot. What do you think? No, I already have a shot for it. I have my wines girded. Let's do it. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Hello, MFA, my beautiful. What's going on? Good to see you. Hope everybody's having a fantastic evening. Hey, girl. You sound a little horse. Are you a horse? I'm more of a pony. Sorry. Hope you're doing good. It's good to hear from you. You can do Alan Perkins was the second. No, no, no. Before the executive yeah. order, we got to keep this smooth. Right. Right. I told you, I told you about <laughs> the Galactic Super Friends track I was listening to today. I fucking love it so much. Like I don't care, I don't care if we, we clear the check. I don't care. It's too good. Of, it's too great of music. It's too good. It's too good, John. I'm putting it up. I'm putting our link up. I'm, I'm putting the link up on our. What do we call it? What do we call that? Anyway, doesn't matter. If you follow us, you know. If you don't. Maybe you should follow us. Everybody learns less. Now that's hilarious. I just had to answer the phone. 
and I chit-chatted for a good 10 minutes, and y'all still talk about soap operas. Those things could go down. Uh, they go on forever and ever and ever. I'm thinking this is her doppelganger who came back to this phone. She's still on the phone. John, a mystery is afoot, and we won't know anything else until next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, other than Daddy to be the night, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about, uh, um, shit. The most off putting one, um, Mr. No, no, Mr. Mom was Kevin, uh, M Michael Keaton, Michael Keaton, yeah. Um, who was Arnold Ford Jr. when he was pregnant? Yeah, right. And he, like, wow, bro, like going back, like, wow, that's wrong on every level you can think of. Yeah, I was a baby, yeah, I, 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 clamps. No, bro. <laughs> no, you should not. Yeah. I, I like the kindergarten cop. It's not a Duma. No, we all going to be police officers. I'm a prisoner. You're going to be a police officer. <laughs> hey, my boy Pete, uh, is there anything from this uh, episode that you'd like to take a second look at, a second glance, a second thought, a second opinion? This is Pete's After Attraction Corner. Actively, John? No, I'm pretty solid in everything I said, everything I did, everything I stood for today. <sighs> nope, I'm good. Fuck them if they can't take a joke. <laughs> well, let's, let's do a shot, uh, see if anyone wants to say goodbye, and then uh, head on over to the green room, huh? Yeah, we're, no, so to clarify, not say goodbye, head to the green room. So anyone who's listening on the stereo app, we are because John makes this big deal about we can't record more than 17 hours or whatever, or something we post on a thing or whatever. I, I don't even know. Who cares? Anyway, we're going to go off this fucking recording and go to the green room, which is still us. Hey, everybody, look at my hands. Look at my hands. Still us. Do another recording. And then you can come in there and then we'll fucking chop it up. Like, there's going to be a craft services table. It's going to be right. beautiful. Right. Because everyone's a little drunk now. You need a little nosh, you need a little something, right? And if not, we're definitely going to do more shots. So, folks, stay with us. We will be back, even though John has to save and record and post this to the whatever, who knows. <laughs> Jesus, who knows. John, what do you got for us? Let's, let's hit these messages. Do it, baby. This is the opening one. scene. Too. Uh, no, I know. Shit, there's a spider. Is it behind me? John, it's right behind me. <gasps> no, I'm good. Nope. John, I'm good. Look behind, behind you. <gasps> Slowly. Slowly. No. Nope. No. Nope. Slowly. No. No. Oh, you don't drop your pistol when you bust through the window. What the fuck are you going to do now, John? What the fuck are you going to do now? Great show, fellas. See you in the green room. John, I'll see your fucking ass in the community. Play the little pop and bubble, baby. Pop and bubble. Dude, what kind of cheeses do y'all got in that grill? Uh, do y'all got the rolled up like ham and turkey, you know? Oh, shit, little... son. Oh, the, oh, the pinwheel? Oh, you like the pinwheel? Uh, it, it gets me moist. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, shit. 
I'm gonna let you know right now. You can get ready to drown a toddler in your shorts because you're gonna get so moist. We got that monster wrapped up in the ham with a little bit of spinach on a fucking toothpick. It's delicious, delightful, lovely. We also have cheese that smells like feet. Like, mm, is that good cheese or bad meat? And I said, you know what? Take your pick. Come on in. Craft Services is up. Will you have any highly selected smoking high mom in the green room? Mm. With the um, specially made craft beers what? brought to you yeah. by helicopter man. The chopper yeah. going down. Yes, that's it. Yeah, that's very good. He loves our beer. So sometimes we take the beer that is we stored here from last year and we age it in a, the butthole of a one-eyed monk. Uh, one uh, pint per bottle, uh, 17 years. Uh, they all have uh, vows of silence. So no one uh, complains, yeah? Then we take the beers out, yeah? Pop them the, the craft table. Oh, that's nice. It's very not bubbly at all. It seems they are flat. <laughs> Anyway, we drink them. They were monk, butthole, cyclop aged. Enjoy. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. We have our open chat show live on stereo every Tuesday. Same start as tonight. So if you want to join us or you want to throw some topics out there, email twosidedpod at gmail.com. That's T-W-O sidedpod at gmail.com. And for those listening live, if you haven't heard enough about it, join our chats in the stereo app on our, in our green room right now. We'll go at uh, 55 after the hour in a couple of minutes for after show wind down. Cheers to you, brother. Cheers to everyone yeah. listening. Everybody drink. Everybody shoot. Everybody drink. Mm. Oh. Oh, mm. That's a wrap for tonight. I'm John L. Peacock out in Brooklyn, New York. I'm my boy Pete. My mother taught me better in Southern California. <laughs> this was our show. You can eavesdrop wherever you get your podcasts and even join us live, uh, both on our YouTube channel, Two Sided Podcast, handle TWO Sided Pod, all one word, and our stereo app every Thursday, 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern, as we talk about the two sides of life, the serious and the fun, here on Two Sided. <laughs> I was about to say, we're getting better, John. Nope. Because I talked through this, I can't talk through this. I don't care anymore. The whole thing. We're getting better, John. When you do that, and you ruin everything. I'll see your ass in the green room, sir.